This is chapter 5 homework for physics 101. It says a shopper in a supermarket pushes a cart uh, with a force of 35 newtons. Direct at an angle of 25 degrees downward. So this is my force. It's 25 degrees, 35 newtons. And the displacement, presumably, is 50 meters. And the displacement is 50 meters in this direction. Now, the work is equal to force times the displacement. Uh, the force that's in the same direction, or rather the component of the force that's in the same direction as the displacement. So, it's my displacement. It's my force. This angle is 25 degrees. And so the component of this force, that is the x component, is F times cosine of 25 degrees. So my work in a more general sense is FD times the cosine of the angle theta. That is the product of these two numbers. So I can just plug this in. It's uh, 35 newtons times my displacement, which is 50 meters, and the cosine of 25 degrees. If I put that in, let's see, 35, 50, I get uh, 1,600 joules. Outfielder throws a 1.15 kilogram, 150 gram baseball at a speed of 40 meters per second at an initial angle of 30 degrees. What is the kinetic energy of the ball at the highest point in its motion? So if I consider this, I have a ball. It follows a projectile's path like this. Its initial speed is 40 meters per second. So at the top of the trajectory, I want to know the kinetic energy. And at the top of the tra trajectory, the velocity in the y direction is zero, and the velocity in the x direction is just equal to the initial velocity, because the acceleration in the x direction is zero. So at the top of the trajectory, the kinetic energy is just one half times nvx squared. So that's one half times the mass, which is 0.15 kilograms times Vx, which is V naught cosine of theta, that is 40.0 meters per second, times the cosine of the angle theta, which is 30 degrees, and this whole term, V naught x, is squared. That gives me 90 joules. Find the height from which you have drop a ball so it have a speed of 9 meters per second before it hits the ground. So I drop a ball, it goes down. When it hits the ground, the final speed is going to equal 9 meters per second. I want to know what is this height, h. Now we did this when we did uh, free fall problems, but it's much easier to consider the energy of the ball. That is, at the top of the trajectory, the potential energy is equal to mgh. And the kinetic energy, because you're dropping it, it initially has a speed of zero, so its kinetic energy is zero. At the bottom of the trajectory, the kinetic energy is at its max, and it's equal to one half mv squared, but the potential energy is equal to zero, because the height is zero. So, I know that the initial energy has to equal the final energy. The initial energy are these two, and the final energy are these two. So I just say mgh equals one half mv squared. My mass is cancel. I solve for, for h, which is what I don't know. It's one half v is nine squared divided by g, which is 9.8. And I check my uh, units here. My second squared cancels with that second squared. I have a meter squared in the numerator, a meters in the denominator, at least we have meters. That works out right. So this is 4.1 meters. This is a very similar problem. Athlete on a trampoline leaps straight into the air. Initial speed of 9 meters per second. Find the maximum height. In fact, we know that it should be the same answer, but let's just work through it nonetheless. Um, here's my athlete on a trampoline. The initial speed that he's going up with, V, is equal to 9 
meters per second. He goes up. I want to know what is this height h that he goes before he reaches uh, before he comes to a stop. So initial energy is equal to final energy. That is that the potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. Now at the bottom the potential energy is zero and at the top the kinetic energy is zero because he comes to rest. This is one half m times 9.0 meters per second squared and that's equal to m 9.8 meters per second squared that's g times h which is what I want to know. My m's cancel, I solve for h I get 4.1 meters which is the same answer we had for the previous problem. It's laid out a little bit differently instead of dropping something we have something jumping up uh, from the ground but works the same way. Now what is the speed of the athlete when she is halfway up to her maximum height? So we want to know what is her speed at h equal 4.1 meters divided by 2. I'll call this 2.1 meters. 2.05, but it rounds off to 2.1. So I want to know her speed at that point. I do the same analysis. PE initial plus KE initial equals PE final plus KE final and my final is going to be at a height of 2.1 meters. For the initial, I can either choose the initial to be at the top of the trajectory at a height of 4.1 meters where there's no uh, kinetic energy, or I can choose it at the bottom where there's no potential energy, but I have a kinetic energy since he has a speed of 9 meters per second squared. I'll choose the latter. So this is 0 plus 1 half mv squared is equal to mgh plus one half mv f squared. This is initial. My mass is all cancel. I can start plugging in some numbers. I have one half. My velocity at the bottom is 9.0 meters per second squared and that's equal to one half or excuse me, uh, 9.8 meters per second squared times 2.1 meters plus one half of VF squared which is what I want to know. I solve that for uh, V or VF and I get 6.3 meters per second. So that's our speed at the halfway point. 50 kilogram pole vaulter is running at 10 meters per second vaults over the bar her speed when she's above the bar is one meter per second. Neglect air resistance. Any energy absorbed by the pole and determine her altitude as she crosses the bar. Initial energy is potential energy plus kinetic energy. That's equal to the final energy. Potential energy plus final energy. Uh, potential energy plus kinetic energy rather. Now initially she's at the ground so H is equal to zero. That goes away. Now, we can't cancel out any of the, the final because she has height and she also has a speed. So she has both potential and kinetic energy when she's going over the bar. Now ideally when you're doing a pole vault, I'm not a pole vaulter, but ideally you want your speed to be as close to zero as possible when you get up to the top. That way you know that most of your energy has gone into potential energy, which means that your height is greater. But again, I'm not a pole vaulter. So let's just put in our variables here. One half m v naught squared is equal to m g h plus one half m v f squared. Um, I'm looking for h. My mass is cancel. Um, h is equal to one half v naught squared, which is ten meters per second squared minus one half VF squared which is 1.0 meters per second squared. That's her velocity when she goes over the bar divided by 9.8 gives me an H of 5.1 meters. So she goes at 5.1 meters. I think that's pretty decent. Pull vault. 
Alright, this gear of mass 70 kilograms is pulled up a slope by a motor driven cable. How much work is required to pull them up 60 meters up a 30 degree slope? So this harkens back to our inclined plane problems. This is 30 degrees. Here's my guy. He's being pulled up a slope, a ski slope. Uh, there are only three forces acting on him. His normal force. The force up. And the weight. I want to figure out what is that force up. Right, and it's going to be some component of the weight. Uh, if I draw my x, y axes, this angle is 90 minus 30, which is 60 degrees. If I draw those vectors, resolving the weight vectors, looks like this. I get Fw cosine of 60. Fw sine of 60. So I can tell from Newton's second law that F up is equal to Fw cosine of 60. Alright, I know this because I'm moving at a constant speed and so the acceleration is zero. So F up minus Fw cosine of 60 is equal to zero. So F up is equal to Fw cosine of 60. Now, that is equal to uh, his mass, which is 70 kilograms, times 9.8, times the cosine of 60 degrees, and that's equal to 340 newtons. So that's equal to F up. That is the force that the, uh, the cable is pulling on him, 340 newtons. So to find the work, the work is just equal to the force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle. So that's just going to be F up times D times the cosine of zero degrees. Because there is no angle between the displacement and F up. In fact, that's why we did all that work, so we don't have to figure out the angle. So that is uh, 340 newtons times D, which is 60 meters. The cosine of zero, of course, is just one. So that is uh, 2,000 joules. Now, that's part A. For part B, I want to know the power. The power is work over time. That's Fd cosine theta over time. But you see, D over T is just V. So it's Fv cosine theta. So that is uh, 340 newtons times um, 2 meters per second times the cosine of the angle theta, which is 0, cosine of 0 rather, which is 1. So that's 340 times 2, or 680 watts. Notice that the power is not dependent upon the displacement because we're not looking for a total energy, we're looking for what is the rate that the energy is being used. So it doesn't matter how far they're going, it doesn't, they're still going to use the same amount of power. All right. All right, this figure of bead of mass 100 grams is on a track, it's initially at rest at a height of 1 meter. The blue portion of this track is frictionless. What is the speed of the bead at the first hill? So this height is 1 meter, so this height is 0.5 meters. V is equal to zero up at the top. I want to know the speed of the B at this height. So my, I'm going to consider this to be scenario one and this scenario two. So the energy at one of the bead is equal to the energy of the bead at point two. That is the potential energy at one plus the kinetic energy at one is equal to the potential energy at two plus the kinetic energy at 2. This is uh, mgh plus 1 half mv initial squared. That's 0 though, so that whole term goes away. Is equal to mgh over 2 plus 1 half mv squared. Alright, that v2 is what I want to know. My mass is canceled. The mass is given, but you don't need to know it. 
If I solve this, put in my numbers here, I have 9.8 meters per second squared times h, which is 1 meter. 9.8 times 1 over 2, which is 0.5 meters, plus 1 half Vf squared. If I solve for V, that's uh, 9.8 times 1 minus 9, it's uh, 9.8 minus 4.9 times 2, square root of that square root of 9.8, which is 3.1 meters per second. Now, for part B, I want to know what height does it rise before stopping on the right-hand side? You should just be able to look at this and say that it rises to a height of h equals 1 meter. Well, let me show you. E1 is equal to E3. We'll call this the third position. So E1 here is equal to E3 here. So their, um, their kinetic energies at both are going to be the B0. So I have MGH plus 0 is equal to M, this is H1, is equal to MGH3 plus 0. So H1 is equal to H3, which is equal to 1 meter.